Let's turn our Bibles to Revelations chapter 21. And this, this week and next week, I'm going to talk about the last days. I'm going to talk about the rapture. I'm going to talk about the last days. And um, is it not good to be in a church where people still talk about the rapture? Yeah, that, that, that's a good thing. Yes, yeah, yeah. A lot of places, people don't even know what the rapture is. They don't even know what this is, what that is. So when I say rapture, some people's hearts are beating so fast because every time they hear about rapture, it's as if they want to beat them up with some kind of theology. No, you'll be blessed with this teaching in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read Revelations. <laughs> so the world is changing. That's what it is. I, um, someone sent me a video some days ago, and one of the global trends, a lot of the global trends, is that um, in some spots in Europe right now, payments have been received through facial recognition. So because of coronavirus, people are not, you know, people, payments are received through facial recognition, people are using their phones, people already have in Switzerland chip impacted to their hands, and they are scanning the chip, you know, that kind of thing, and all of those things are happening, you know. Um, this unprecedented time, people are wondering, are we at the end of the world? What is that, exactly is going on? So people are asking questions because things we've never seen happen before are beginning to happen. So people that is the end of the world come? Some people are giving some time frame to the return of Jesus Christ. So the thing, so why is this important to us? It's important because when you're traveling, you need to pack for where you're going. So if it's winter, you pack up what thick clothing. If it's summer, you pack up what like clothing. If we're coming to the end of the age, how are you prepared for where you're going? Because it's amazing because what, see, right now if I'm in Nigeria, I can wear a short, I can wear a t-shirt. But in this season, if I'm going to something like Arkansas in the US, I have to pack really thick clothing because it's going to be what? Extremely, extremely cold. So I'm saying so to you because what, what is in your suitcase for where you're going to? That's a question. Because you can feel like, oh, but t-shirt is okay here. T-shirt and short is okay for Nigeria. But the moment you take the flight to the other place in Arkansas where the winter and it's minus 10 degrees, you have to change what you, want, what you wear. So some things are okay if this is your end. But if you are moving somewhere else, then you have to change those things. So let's look at what the Bible says. So I'm, I'm going to dwell to today. It's going to be very encouraging. Revelation chapter 21. Um, Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. This is good. He says, and I saw a great heaven and a great earth. And the first heaven, and he said, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. The Bible says this, and I, and I John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride. He said the city was prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God shall be with them, and they shall be their God. The Bible says, and God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. This is what I'm going to. He says, in heaven, there shall be no more death. It, it's not amazing. I get to see Paul. Th there's no heartbreak that I'm going to lose someone. Some of you, you've lost your parents are in the faith. He says, a time will come, they will never leave again. Some of you lost a child. A time will come, you'll see that child again. It's beautiful. He says, he says, there shall be no, he says, he says, God shall wipe away all their tears. He said, God will be the one providing the comfort and there shall be no more death. He says, neither sorrow. There will not be sorrow. Everyone is beautiful. Ladies, don't need to make up again. The skin is perfect. No need. Listen, if you want a red lip, it's red lips all the way. The hair, I always, the hair don't go wrong. Hair is perfect. No pimples, no, no feel up, no, 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 what? No? More straight. No something, you know. Nothing like that. No, every time, echo, echo to the Bible. Your hair just grows at the right pace, stays at the right pace. No dust, can you imagine? Heaven is beautiful. You walk all the streets, your shoes don't get dusty. That's wonderful. Just imagine walking on streets that look like gold. Heaven is wonderful. Just imagine what heaven is like. You want to move maybe a distance from 
Nigeria to the US in heaven, all of a sudden, all you have to do is to think and say it and you are there. Because your body can translate distance, speed, and space. Heaven is wonderful. That's why sometimes when some Christians die and we're trying to break them back, some people be like, in fact, I've had situations where Christians die and they pray them back and the person wakes up from the dead and says, please, there's nothing for me to live for here. And the person says, it's only when you've, seen, you've not seen heaven you think this place is a good place. Someone says, his husband I'm looking for. In heaven, we're all the same. See, we, we all own each other. Praise the Lord. Nobody, nobody has exclusivity of anything. No sorrow, no, 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 no house rent, praise God. No school fees, praise God. Yay. Heaven is a good place. No taxes, no politicians, you know, no, you know, no politicians. Just wonderful how heaven is. It's a great place. See, we need to always think about heaven. So it says, and God shall wipe away their tears. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying. There will be nothing that will bring about pain. No heartbreak. No, this guy I dated broke my heart. No, nothing like that. He says, neither shall there be any more pain. There will be no emotional pain. Why? For the former things are passed away. See, why do we teach about the last days? So let me tell you something. <laughs> this is amazing. When most people study the book of Revelation, they want to study about the Antichrist. That is so wrong. The book of Revelation, read the title, is the book of Revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because people think the book is the book about the Antichrist. You see, the Antichrist is a side topic. And it's only a topic because it's trying to copy Christ. There's no way in the Bible that gives attention to the devil. He's too irrelevant. Glory to God. So this is, this is wonderful. So, so, so I say, I'm always afraid. Why are you afraid? This is our home. See, the reason why we study, the reason why we study about heaven is this. When we study about heaven, it produces excitement. I always think about this. I don't know if you think about it. What will I do if I see Jesus for the first time face to face? See, I don't know i don't know what i would do but it's always in my thoughts that one day hey the one i've served all my life i've endured so many reproaches for i look at him i always i always i'm always thinking when he sees me what will be the first words that will come from his mouth to me that's my thought of heaven what will he say to me? I, I hope he can say, son, you tried. You did well. I'm proud of you. That, and I'm saying so because the way I live my life, that's what I want him to say. Some people don't care about all those things, but I care about what Jesus will say to me when I see him. I, I don't know how I'll feel when I finally get to meet Abraham, get to see Elijah, Get to see Peter. Get to see Paul. Get to meet John the Baptist. Get to meet all these big giants of faith. And I, I get to meet the more recent one, like Archbishop Bessin Dahosa. I get to meet people like Brother Kenny Hagen. People like Brother Charles Cabs. People like Apostle Ayo Babalola. And I say, Sir, I heard all the stories. I heard all the stories. I heard all the stories. That's what we teach about heaven. See, listen to me. Most of you don't even think about heaven that way. Because all these things we do, let me say to you, a day will come that will be the last Sunday. Because this world will not exist forever. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. What happened to the old one? He was done away with. I know you want miracles, but God wants you. There's a bigger thing than miracles. There's a bigger thing that say, God, give me a husband, give me a job, give me. See, there's a bigger thing that say, you know, um, I do, I clean the chairs in church, I serve in church. The, the, it's, it's, it's a fact that I know God. Because the day will come, we might not know it, we will finish it on Sunday, and we'll say, see you in the next level. And somewhere in the evening, while we're yet watching TV, 
Jesus appears in the sky and the trumpet sounds Matadiga Vashanda Kaparatu Satya Oske Parodoshke Bratilisto Brandi his the butter. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Ah He said then we that are alive we are alive physically and we remain in the faith all of a sudden we check out hey yeah 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 we are in the supermarket in shop right we were about to give them the atm cards we were about to swipe all of a sudden the trumpet said Pow! we didn't even say we are coming we just go Pah! hey hey we are at a wedding i'm still going to say you may kiss your bride and they are about to eh, and all of a sudden but the bride the bridegroom the pastor boom, some people that came to the wedding are looking for them <laughs> passing through customs at the airport they say remove your shoes remove your belt they saw you enter into the scanner they didn't see you come out of the scanning machine they say where is he all of a sudden they can't find you again first corinthians says in the moment we shall be changed ah he, he says we shall be changed this is what the bible calls the glorious hope nothing compares to it he said the glory he says we shall be changed hey 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 someone says in heaven what will our height be i will tell you what our height will be we will all be the same you know why because the bible says mortality will put on immortality this body will come to perfection the one that was born lame the, le the legs will come out you see everything will be perfected because it's now in heaven there's no imperfection in heaven ah this is what you have to remind yourself from because let me tell you something if you don't have the focus of heaven you will feel stupid sometimes this is what paul said paul said if there's no heaven we are of all men the most miserable because if there's no heaven all the denial all the fasting all the giving why there's no reason for it the only reason is because something is ahead praise god he told us he's coming back for us he says he's coming back for us he's coming back for us let's read matthew 24. oh this is good and let me say something to you as we talk about this as we talk about the last days you will see that the signs because jesus christ said when the time is closed you will see these signs he says you will see the signs you will see the signs it's like someone said, what do you mean it's like someone said when you're getting to my house in Ibadan, you will start seeing palm trees you will start seeing gardens so as you start seeing palm tree and gardens what does it tell you i'm close to the house when we see the signs it tells us we're close we're close close to the end close to the end close to the end you know when i was younger i've always wondered when i was about 12 years old i've always wondered that if someone is the rapture he can hide because there was no technology that could cover the whole world that time i, I couldn't think about some things were impossible when i was younger when i thought about the rapture you know when you talk about those, those days when they talk about rapture and the mark of 666 they said you see them drawing with iron 666 we, we now know they don't have to draw anything that's it's, it's an imprint when it, when it says they will not be able to buy or sell we, we didn't know it's a code that we're hands buying and selling and when you see the world let me tell you something there. you see america is a lot of trouble you know america is in a mess people are losing respect for america have you noticed that but i told all of you that have been in the church for a while i told you this will happen who remembers i said because as we come to the end of the world the focus must leave the u.s and move to where middle east the focus is going to be in israel for the first time in history israel is making alliance with islamic nations israel and united arab emirates have now partnered for the first time this year israelis can now enter dubai 
You know why? What happened recently? Iran has started again their nuclear weapon. Because the action of the last days is in the Middle East. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Let's read. The Bible says in Matthew 24. So they had asked just Christ in Matthew 11 verse, what are the signs of your coming and of the end time? And see what just Christ. But as the days of Noah is, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So let me say this quickly. There are two comings of Jesus Christ. So the first one is the rapture. The rapture is not really his coming. At the rapture, what happens is this. Jesus appears in the sky and a trumpet is sounded and um, what they call it, the Christians or those that are ready are pulled at once into heaven. So someone says, what does it mean when the Bible says the dead in Christ, first thousand chapter four, you know, they're so, oh wow. <laughs> I'm looking at the time. Let's go to first thousand chapter four. Let me just show you that quickly. First thousand chapter four. He's coming back again. My Lord is coming back again. He went away and promised he's coming back again. He's coming back again. My Lord is coming back again. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. Where will it be? I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working for my God. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working. I'll be somewhere working. First Thessalonians chapter 4. This is good. Mm. Verse 13. He says, I will not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. The word asleep here means die. That you sorrow not. He says, when you hear that that brother died, he could have died from COVID. We didn't want him to die, but he eventually died. He said, he pains you, but there's something you remember that reduces the pain. What reduces the pain? He says, that you sorrow not. He says, even as others, see what it says, he made a dichotomy. He said, there are two kinds of people. There are some that it all ends here. There are some that there's an eternity. He says, as others that have no hope. Hey, some people, they live for today. Some of us live for today and tomorrow. He says, once to show the person he's living for tomorrow, he says this. He says, it will pain you. Manage the pain. Why? He said, for this will say unto you by the word of the Lord. So, so see, see, see why? Verse 14. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them that sleep, or die. He didn't say everyone that dies. Then that's died in Jesus. Not everyone that had the Christian burial. He says everyone that died in the faith of Jesus Christ. He says every them that died in Jesus. He said, shall God bring with him again. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. He said, for this will say unto you about the word of God. That we which are alive physically and we're remaining. See, the, the point is this. Do you imagine that Paul actually thought he would be alive? Because he used the word we that are alive. A Paul was expecting that time 
How should we express him today? He says, we that life and remain. We, sorry, we, um, he said, for we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are life and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them that are asleep. He says, don't think that the people that are physically alive will affect those that are dead already. So Paul began to explain to us what happened in the rapture. We'll talk about that next week. He says, what, what does happen? He said, that, he said, this is what happened. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a sound. With a voice of, with a, with a, with a shout. With the voice of the trumpet. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of the Lord. See what it says. It says, and the dead in Christ shall do what? The question I want to ask you is this. Where are the dead right now? In Christ. The reason why I ask you is that you must use your mind and ask questions. Where are they? We say when you die, you go to heaven. But you now said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Where are they rising from? Oh, wow. Just like someone says, the mark of the beast is 66. It's wrong. The mark of the beast is not 66. If you are looking for 66, you will follow the wrong thing. I'm going to show you next Sunday what the mark of the beast is. Because most of you have not been able to check the Bible for what it says. You just follow all those things online. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first. This is what it is. Man is spirit, soul, and body. When man dies, his spirit and his soul goes to heaven. But his body is in the grave. So in heaven, it's just a spirit. And because the spirit, its functions are limited. Because it doesn't have a celestial body. He said, what will happen at death is this. Their body that has remained will catch up with their spirits. Everything will slap back together. How do I know that? That's why 1 Corinthians 15 says, <clears throat> that's why the Bible says this. 1 Corinthians 15 says that in the moment we shall be changed. That's why in heaven nobody can have a deformity because the bodies will be perfected. It's not the body. See, that's why the complexion, all those things, everything will not change. This is what this is the, the way the Bible says in First Corinthians 15. I can show you that later. Is when you plant a corn, is it how does it come out? Is it the same way you plant a corn and it comes out in another body? Is it the same thing? Once you have planted a natural body, when you come out, you come out in another body. We will be able to recognize you, but your body will be different. Your body is going to have what I call spiritual materiality. It's going to call heavenly materiality. What does that mean? So. The same way just Christ rose from the dead. How do I know your body will, will be, will, will can recognize you? The reason is this. When they saw Jesus, they all recognized him. Yes, sir. <clears throat> How, what happened? Was he a spirit? See, listen to me. When Jesus rose from the dead, he was not a spirit. How do I know? Because he asked them. He said, do spirit. Someone says a ghost. He said, do spirit have what? Flesh and bones? Yes. No, no. That's what he said. He said, do spirit have flesh? Meaning that spirits don't have flesh, but he had flesh. Can I, can I get some water? <coughs> it says, the spirit have flesh. Then, you know what it says? He invited them to eat. Thank you. I'll just drink some and give back to you. He said, the spirits will have flesh. Even ask them for food. Was it? Luke 24, 39. Can you put it on the screen? Luke 24, verse 39. He said, Spirit don't have flesh. So, meaning that when he resurrected, that's what, because the Bible says in 1 John, it says, when we see him, we shall be like him. So, if he had flesh, we will have flesh. Only that it's not the type of flesh we have. Luke 24 verse 49. Guys at what? 39. Luke 24 verse 39. Is it there? All right. Let, let's just keep going if they can put it there. All right. See what it says. It says, Behold my hands and my feet, that is I. For a spirit, for handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and what? Bones. He said, As you see me have. They could even touch the wound. He told Thomas, He said, Touch where they pierced me. The wound was there, but it was all degenerating. So when people die in Christ, they go to so say, what about because the Bible says after death comes judgment. Once you die as a Christian, you go to heaven. If you're not a Christian, you go to the other side. 
when they laugh at you after coming to church, we're like, he that laughs last has, has laughed best. They say, every time, Monday church, Tuesday church, Tuesday church, Tuesday church, 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 church. They're like, I know what I'm doing. Let's read. This is, this is so good. So, so what happens at rapture that the body and the spirit unite for the people that are dead? So we'll see what the Bible says. So um, I, I want to just continue quickly. He says, but as the days of Noah are, what was the days of Noah? In the days of Noah, Noah was calling them, a flood is coming. A flood is coming. They say you are stupid. You are crazy. You are not informed. You are not scientific. You are not enlightened. They give him all these excuses. Is that how it is today? Why you say you're a Christian? It's like, you know, you guys, eh? the way you interpret things, you carry your money and give to a church, give to a pastor, you know, you guys are losing your mind. You know, let's have some fun. Let's go to Bahamas. Let's see some fresh girls. Let's, you know, let's, let's make some cool money. It's about money. Oh, let's do this. Let's do that. Oh, let's give it to them. Oh, is DNA test reading right now? Everybody's saying something. It says, as the day of Noah. That's the thing. Everything was normal until Noah entered the boat, entered the ark. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says when Noah entered the ark, God helped him. Noah, God locked the ark. You know why? If Noah had locked it, he would open it when they were crying. He said, Noah, God locked the ark. He says, the days of Noah were. He says, they were drinking and eating, giving him marriage. That's what we want to do right now. The, in the weekend is his boyfriend's weekend. I go to my boyfriend's place, weekend. And that, that's what we have our own time. Sunday morning is his children, his volleyball time. Weekend is Ibiti Laem, um, Island, let's go to some um, beach house time. Elashe time. All this nonsense. When rapture happens and you're on that beach, Elashe, <laughs> don't come back to Lagos because the Antichrist will find you. I'm telling you. People don't talk about heaven again. Many of you are here. You, you just come to church and even born again. Is that so? I'm coming to church. <laughs> Listen, it's not people that come to church that go to heaven. No, it's people that know Jesus that go to heaven. Yes. All of you. Some of you are serving as a leader. You are serving as this. You're serving, and it's taking your time. See, every time you forget why you're doing what you're doing, remember heaven. The reason why is this: when we get to heaven. Some things will not matter. One, where you walked. Either you were president, you were governor, all those things don't matter in heaven. Heaven is a leveler. You know what doesn't matter also? Where you lived. Either you lived in the US, or you lived in Nigeria, or in Ekoi, or in Morocco, or where? In uh, Obalende, it doesn't matter. You know what doesn't matter? Either you're married or single, it doesn't matter. Only one thing matters. For you to get to heaven, do you know Christ? But once you're in heaven, one thing matters. Excuse me, madam. What did you do for Christ? Ah! And you'll see some people. They built dynasty in this world. But heavenly bankrupt. You know, I saw a post some time ago. He said, just imagine God says, your offering will be your, your, your chop money in heaven. How many of you saw that post? It was, it was on social media. Oh, thank you. Because all of a sudden, what will matter is this. Do you win souls? You know, some, some of you, to win one soul is so difficult for you. We say, take the next level flyer, put on your status, invite your friends. You say, no, no, uh, um, you know, you know my, my kind of friends. Hey! When they get to hell, they will remember you as a terrible person. In church, you can't be an usher. But meanwhile, in the disco hall, you are the one that organizes everybody. In church, you cannot lead. But in the office, you will see the manager. When you get to heaven, God will ask you, so all the things I gave you, it was for you to work in Zenith Bank and Chevron. Is that everything? All the money I gave you, after you bought Louis Vuitton, um, Versace, all of it, is that all? What did you do for me? You will be like the person that has one talent, the unprofitable servants. This teaching should shape you, should shape you and say, hey, I must consciously start investing in heaven. Because it's your opportunity here that helps your investment in heaven. Let's read. The Bible says, For as in the days were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until Noah entered the flood. The Bible says, 
they knew not they, they didn't even care until the flood came and took them away he said so shall be just kind of say he said this is exactly how it will be have you noticed as we journey towards the end people lose their spirituality there are people that say i have not been to church oh. i see this here ah, but it's okay i'm watching online though they are not watching i said why have you not come it's covid though i said but during the match pass SARS match pass i saw you there you were there with eight thousands of people no social distancing you could go for match pass the church where they're doing social distancing you cannot go some people every time they pray is miracle when last did you pray for missionaries when last did you pray for new converts when last did you pray that god's church will grow and the gospel will expand in kuwait he will expand in iran it will expand in brain oh you can't pray for that kind of thing no eh? we see breakthrough what church when they say receive passion for souls no keep quiet but when they say receive husband amen receive money amen when you get to a place where money and husband does not matter what will you have to show he says this he says hey shatire he says there shall be two in the field one shall be taken the other shall be left two shall be grinding at the meal one shall be taken the other shall be left two will be doing instagram life <laughs> one shall be taken did i say is he that work? no he's been taken he's been taken hey, 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 hey. he's been taken he said the other left what did he say he says watch therefore he says why say what he said be careful why say be careful because anybody can drift you must be intentional about your spiritual life how do you become intentional there are some decisions you must make one of them is this i will always pray and read my bible daily it's a decision I will never miss church on a Sunday. It's a decision. I will find a place to serve with my gift. It's a decision. Don't say, uh, you know, um, you, you are so intentional about your career, intentional about your beauty. When you go, you say, no, I have to buy my products. You, you have products. You always buy products. You have hospital. But the only thing are not intentional about your reward in heaven. Some big men. See, don't be a big man in this world and a nobody in heaven. Someone say hell will be sweet. I understand. Why you think hell? You say ah. See all people are going to hell. That's the thing. When you are not God, do you know who is going to hell? Do you know what? It is? See, you will be surprised and get to heaven and see Michael Jackson there, because in his last minute he just said, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry, and God said welcome. And you that you think he will be there, you say no, no, that was inspiring. Is it that green in heaven? Because you are behaving as if you have a roll call of those in hell. I have a roll call. I say, hell will bubble. Hell will bubble. Oh, you've seen the list, Abby? You've seen the list. <laughs> you will get there. <laughs> I say, ah, what? You just say, no, 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 no. Angel, I, I'm in the wrong hell. Ah, <laughs> I saw people seem past me now. I saw people have my motivation. I don't people seem past me. He said, watch it therefore. Why? For you know not the hour when the Lord the words come. He said, this is why you must be always on alert. The reason why you must remember this is this. And let me tell you why we're teaching this. So that every time, you can always be thinking, he's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. He's coming back soon. I always think about that all the time. Sometimes the work of the ministry becomes so tough for me. But I say, when I see Jesus, what am I going to tell him? See, I always tell myself, I'm lucky that Jesus Christ called me to pastor in the city. Some people are pastoring in Ijebuibo. Some people are pastoring in a, give me one distant place that there's no civilization. What? What? In Koma Hill, where they walk naked. He didn't ask me to go to Koma Hill. He said, I should pastor in the city. I'm grateful. You, he only asked you to be an usher. You say, eh, well, I'm an executive girl. I'm grateful. What about if he says, go to Koma Hill? What will he do? I'm grateful that this way he comes to pastor in the city. I'm grateful because I'm not better than those that go to Koma Hill. Look at this lady that bought it, um, um, twins in Calabar. What's her name? Miss Lesser. Miss Lesser's parents were wealthy in Britain. 
She moved to Nigeria. There was light and television in Britain. By the time she moved to Nigeria, there was no electricity. But that was her calling. She died of malaria in Nigeria. But that was her calling. Am I better than Mr. Lesson? So even the easy one is giving me. Why would I be grateful? The thing is that a lot of Christians have lost their focus. And the reason is this. We already com- we compare ourselves to the, those that have no God. Your biggest motivation is Forbes, Forbes net worth. And sometimes it's we pastors that confuse you, confuse you. Because we make it seem as if if you don't have money, you are not blessed. Yet, most money that you see in this world are not attached to God's blessings. So all of a sudden, the church members become very greedy. It's one thing to be driven. It's another thing to be greedy. What's the difference? The moment you put your money before God, you have become greedy. What's the money? So everything you do is driven by money. You have no conscience. You have no conviction. You have no values. You have no belief. If Jesus has touched you, Listen to me. One of the things you will surrender is your money. Ask Zacchaeus. Jesus did not ask for tithe. Zacchaeus says, all the things I have taken, I will give back. The man that came to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said, go and sell all you had. He says, he couldn't. Many of you, the one that is a millionaire is not the one that has millions in the bank. It's the one that has put millions on the altar. Has used millions to affect life. The reason why is that whatever you give to God as an offering is in recorded in an account in heaven. Philippians chapter 4. Let me even show you. I, I didn't plan to do that, but let, let, let's, let's go there. Hmm. Philippians chapter 4. Don't build your house on the sandy ground. Verse 16. For in Thessalonica, Philippians 4, 16. For in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again to my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but what? I desire what? That we're about to what? Question, where is this account? Jesus himself said, he said, don't stop your treasure where moth, inflation, deflation affected he says stop so there's another store somewhere else have i said don't make money i've not said so but if your whole life is defined about money you have the wrong life and money is a race that never ends i, I always try i have some friends that are very rich i have friends personal friends that have private planes some things don't get to me because I had to demobilize them lest I become distracted. See, once the devil knows you like money, he will use it to draw you out. The loss of the eye, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life. Those are things you must, dist- you must, you must demobilize it. Even when you want to make money, the reason how to make money is to make an investment for the kingdom. Give yourself a bigger reason to do that. Everybody knows you when you come to party and organizing. This guy can do bachelor's eve, brighter shower, this and this. This guy can organize, can help you get company, help you see the governor. Question, who have you helped to see God? Next level is there now. Let's share the links. I don't like, I, I don't like to put religious things on my program. Don't worry. You are not proud of God. Maybe you get to heaven. He says, whosoever is ashamed of me in front of men, I will be ashamed of me before my father. You are so pretty. You can't put the things of the gospel on your social media. Don't worry. Heaven is coming. Bible says, even the things you do in secret, it shall be exposed before men. You will see a very pretty lady. When she goes to party, she will catch all the attention. She usher in church. She thinks her beauty is too much. Dust. Head to toe dust. Enhanced dust with cosmetics. Thinks the beauty is too much. A man thinks he's too wealthy to serve Jesus. He thinks he's too intelligent to serve Jesus. Who gave you wisdom? Who gave you intelligence? The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. Brother, calm down. Brother, calm down. Is it not beautiful to come down out of your G wagon or Rolls Royce? And as you come down, you are late. You pick your Bible. You run. And when you're running, you get there. Why are you running? Ah, I'm an usher. I came late. 
And meanwhile, the unbeliever says, hey, with all the money, because all of a sudden, he's seen where your heart is. He's seen where your heart is. Many people have challenges at work. I don't know those kind of things. They don't get discouraged because money is there. And it's morning in church. I'm tired. I'm angry. I'm upset. Hey, hey, I'm tired. But at work, you don't get tired though. Because money is there. So the Bible says this. The Bible says this. Verse 45. But notice that if the good man of the house had known and watched what the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour ye think not, the Son of Man shall come. Who then is faithful and wise? Who then has the Lord made rule over his house to give them meat? Look at verse 46. Blessed is that servant when his Lord when a cometh, shall find him so doing. Verily I say unto you, then he shall make him ruler over all his goods. And if the evil servant shall say, my Lord delayeth my coming. That's the problem. It feels too long. He says, and he begins to smite. You see, the person, this is even a servant. He now begins to smite, destroy the church. You know, it's, it's distracted. Mm. Maybe I should just close with this. Second Timothy chapter 3. No, no, not second Timothy. Maybe Matthew 24. Say Matthew 24, verse 3. Just the beginning. L let me just talk about seven signs of the last days so you can know what time it is. The Bible says, as it sat upon the mounts, I'm going to jump. It says, tell us when this thing shall be. What shall be the sign of your coming and of the, of the end of the world? And Jesus said, the first thing he said, Jesus answered and said, take heed, let no man deceive you. The number one sign of the last days, large-scale deception. Have you not seen Jesu Onyebo? A lot of deception. Jesus, someone says Jesus of Nazareth. Someone says, someone says I have power, Bakus Katus. I have under power, Bakus Patus. And, and people are going to that kind of church. What other power does a minister have if not prayer, fast than the word of God? Where do you find those? Those are demonic powers. And I challenge them openly. He said, I have, power back. He said, I have not touched that one. Who gave you such power? It can't be from the Lord. Mass deception. See how social media is willing to, to attack anything. God, church, Christ, minister. It's public attack. Even Christians have joined them. Mass deception. He said, let no man deceive you. Because by the time you finish that fight on social media, you've destroyed the pastor, Abby. That's good. But guess what? The other people that God has called to be pastors, that's why they now become pastors. Because they're afraid if they make a mistake, this is how you will shred me. And all the people that are shredding them have their own secret sins. I met a guy that's called to the ministry on Friday. He said, the reason I don't want to pastors is that I'm afraid of making mistakes. But are there other routes to solve the issue? They are! Then what do you do to unbelievers? All the Muslims and all of them, they laugh at you. Say, idiots. See how they're fighting themselves. Do you see me talk against a man of God? I've learned one thing. Him and his master will solve it. Are we not going to heaven? Are we not going to heaven? Let's get there now. Didn't you hear that? I never knew you. Eh. Let them keep on carrying just money and be raping the girls. Let them keep on. They will get shocked. Trumpet will sound. Bam! The girlfriend will hold their hand. He said, you want to go alone? <laughs> Easy like that. Some pastor, everything is about money. He said, last year, mass deception. So the second thing is this. See, let this next verse. He says, for many will come in my name and say, I'm Christ and shall deceive many. I know hearing pastors that don't do, they, are, they organize miracle. They organize and say, pretend. A lot of crazy things. Crazy things. There shall be mass deception. Someone says, well, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm not, like, I'm not that kind of Christian. I'm a mixture. <laughs> Listen to me. There's only one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that's Jesus. When the pastor starts giving you palm oil to drink, Second, it says this. 
for you shall hear of wars and what rumors of war he says be not troubled for all the things must come to pass but the end is not come why are there so many wars because for the last days what is rumor of war terrorism rumor of war the, the, you must remember that the bible was written in the context of some things that they didn't understand can happen because let me say something how will the bible describe iphone 2000 years ago they will describe it in a very funny way because they can't even understand what they're describing that's why sometimes when you read a prophecy you not need to, you need to read the prophecy in light of a moment just like when it's when but said in heaven there are streets of gold if you notice i didn't take that conversation because in heaven there are no streets of gold the bible says that the streets in heaven look like gold but transparent gold the guy doesn't know what to call it because it's nothing he has ever seen before He doesn't know what he, what he is. So because... <laughs> let's go. The last one I will stop is this. It says, there shall be... So, someone we read the Bible, for example, <laughs> for example, the Bible says that two weaknesses in the book of Revelation shall be seen all over the world. Uh, how would two God be seen all over the world? They couldn't imagine transmission, televisation. They couldn't imagine it. So, they would just... Because when I read that thing when I was a young child, I said, how is this possible? How would the whole world see these people? All right, the next thing is this it says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be, see, there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in different places. The third sign is this nature will begin to react very negatively. Nature will react very negatively. Because you know why? It's not just human beings that are tired, even nature is tired. Nature is tired because things, nature is tired, so nature begins to react. Nature is, Bible says, even the nature, the earth, the earth, the world is asking for redemption. Peter said, the, the, the works as wax old like a garment. So nature begins to react. That's why the, you see the earthquakes, the, the pestilence, the virus, the pandemics, all those things. So the end is at hand. Let's pray. Maybe I should read the scripture to you before we pray. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 11. So that we can put a good close to this. Oh, Second Peter 3 verse 11. Second Peter 3 verse 11. The guys at the back, can you be faster? All of you online, I hope you settle down and you just take, this, you take this in. Second Peter 3 verse 11. Let's read Second Peter chapter 3 verse 11. You are at Second Kings chapter 3 verse 9. Let's read together. One to God. Seeing then, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness? Let me tell you something. This teaching should not scare you. This teaching should do two things. Prepare you and excite you. He says, seeing, seeing all those things, who are you going to be? Who are you going to be? He said, don't be the person you were before. Let the thought of heaven change you into somebody else. Let it change your values. Let it change your priorities. Let it change the way you think. See, this, this is the thing about life. All of us, because we're human, we drift from focus. If this is focus, things happen that push us like this and push us like this. He says, hey, be careful. Just go back this way. He said, they say this, what matter of man are you going to be? The reason why is that you can hear this thing that doesn't change you. So how are you going to do number one the first thing you have to do will you examine your heart and ask yourself one question you can write the question now am i still heaven focused is that a motive in things i do the second thing you want to ask yourself is this you want to redefine your values some people everything's about making money right now it's about some people it's not about making money it's about do i enjoy it it's about i i got i to enjoy it oh i got some of his influence the millions of followers on social media and i'm not saying that all those things are bad but rank it at the right place some people since they got married they've forgotten gospel redefine your values 
you cannot have the same values as an unbeliever and have eternal consciousness you can't someone that is going to fly catch a flight and someone that's not catching a flight they can't behave the same to us the flight they can't to us your flight the one that is not catching a flight and the one that's catching a flight they can't behave the same if you're catching a flight then it will change your values one of the values I have is this, I live for today and for eternity. Say with me, say, I live for today and for eternity. So as I'm planning, I want to have this house, I'm thinking of in heaven also. I live for today, I live for eternity. As I spend all my time in this, I think of heaven also. And you know the thing, God is going to ask you about what he gave you, not what he don't give you. I know God is the best you can't give excuse because he knows everything. The third thing is this. Check your mindset. The reason why is that you will always act in like, what mindset is distracting me or influencing me from heavenly consciousness? If your mind gravitates towards something, even though you know heaven is there, you'll find yourself pulling back. If your mind is so comfort-oriented, if your mindset is so money-oriented, if your mindset is so comparison-oriented, it will drift that way. And the last thing is this. Reevaluate your life and your priorities. What are your priorities? So people say, I've set 2021 goals. What do you have spiritual goals? How many souls do you plan to win this year? How many people do you plan to help this year? Oh, those are not goals, just the goals of I want to smash my finance. I, I want to just wear this, I want to wear this 34 carat gold ring. Eh, have other goals. Living with eternal with eternity consciousness. Is a deliberate plan. Do your priorities, time, and resource, do your priorities, time, and money, resource allocation reflect eternity? Or it's just here. Eternal investment. How do I invest eternally? It means living for God, serving God, soul winning, giving to God. Let's pray. When He calls me, Don't stand up yet. You stand up. All of you that are not born again, I would love to lead you in prayer. Even if you are backsliding, it's a good time to come back home today. You don't have to stand up anywhere you are. Raise up your right hands. I want to pray for you today. I want to give my heart to Christ. Thank you. God bless you. Just raise up your right hands. I want to give my heart to Christ. Someone said that I, I, I'm shy. If you're shy, this is not the time to be shy before Christ. All of you raise up your right hands. Stay with me. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the message today. I believe that you died for me, raised from the dead for my justification. I receive eternal life today. I've become heaven bound and conscious in Jesus' name. Amen.